Welcome everyone to the Real Life Trading Swing Trading Floor, where our mission is to enrich lives. My name is Brad Reed and I am a real life trader and I would like to encourage you to be good. And by good, I mean get out of debt, achieve your financial dreams and give generously to your community. What's going on everyone? Oh, maybe I should say today is April 11th because I start a lot of webinars like that, don't I? Welcome, thanks for being here. Drop my kids off at the dance studio and ran like crazy, but I am here. Clive says, I saw a Super Mario video in there. Yep, my, uh, my son has been watching some YouTube on my computer, and he is in a big Super Mario Brothers phase. Looking on Slack, and yeah, I think I've got all of their requests. So let's get going. Let's talk about the overall market. Um, still just a little bit sideways, opened at resistance and traded lower. Uh, I actually thought we were gonna go bullish today. Uh, Clive said, tried to score you and Blake some FTPs for a prediction on BBBY. It did, it went to 27.27 the post market. Hmm. Well, now I have to look. BBBY. Oh, we were, yeah, we were talking about it having a big gap up um, and we were going to fade it off of resistance yesterday, didn't we? And <clears throat> if we look at the post market from yesterday, yep, there it is. Very cool. It's good to know I can be right about something. Hopefully my wife watches this video. <laughs> I'm just playing. Just kidding. I don't need these lines anymore. But yeah, I gapped down today. A very nice bearish gap and go. We were watching to trade it bearish, but it opened right above this support, right above that 20 moving average. And yeah, just, just watched it go bullish all day. Back to the market. Res yeah, opened at resistance and traded down. Uh, I still don't know why, but around 11 o'clock or, or 11.45, close to noon today, we had a very rapid sell-off here on the market. Um, based on the gap, I was bullish. We were making an ascending triangle, and I thought we were going to go screaming bullish, but uh, no, something happened. We sold off, just came down to support and turned upwards. So whatever that event was, um, was obviously short-lived. If we open just above there tomorrow, uh, I will be extremely, extremely bullish. We've had one more day for that, uh, that 10 moving average to come in. Hmm, I wonder if we have pulled away from the Bollinger Band. We have. So that right there, is not bullish at all, right? When, you, when we start failing to get into that upper band, things tend to not get so happy, right? Maybe it's one of these and we're ready to come back to the band. I would like to see that. Big strong candle tomorrow sure would be nice, but uh, definitely um, if you look at times where we failed to close into the uh, upper band on the Bollingers, uh, we tend to not continue in that bullish direction. So um, I will be cautious tomorrow. I won't be on the day trading floor, but even a little bit of a downward move might need to be taken extremely seriously as this could be a very small but cute double top pulling us back into, um, yeah, we, yeah, uh, pulling us back into some kind of support. Uh, let me turn that off and let's look at this on a big picture. And you can see we are into, right, a major resistance area where we have had two big sell offs. 
we have had a really, really big upward move. Little bit of shakiness over the last couple of weeks, but um, based on this last move, it would not uh, be surprising at all if we came back into one of these areas maybe before we continued up. Hmm, that Bollinger really kind of changed, really kind of changed the game for me. Uh, we have been going sideways, so the Stokes and RSI are going to show that. Wow. Okay, so the Stokes show a pretty healthy move, and so does the RSI. So the Stochastics and the RSI are disagreeing with the Bollinger Band. So we will just have to see what happens. Um, I am more bullish than bearish. And I think any kind of bullish move tomorrow would be very, very strong. Any kind of bearish move might need to be taken seriously. So if you are in um, a market position or if you have um, shares that will be affected if the market goes bearish, uh, I think tomorrow is a good day to be watching. Um, yeah, good day to play. De I mean, Friday is always a good day to play defense. But um, yeah, the fact that we did not get into that upper Bollinger. I want to look at it one more time. I want to look what happened in this area. Yeah, see, we're walking the band, walking the band, got out of the band, came back down. Walking the band, walking the band, got out of the band, walking that band. Yeah, we might pull down to the midline or more. I often think Fridays tend to be reversal days. Uh, there's not much to reverse. You know, so if we if we had a bearish week, Friday we close out and go bullish. If we've had some bullish action, we hit Friday, sell off and go back bearish. But I mean, that is our week right there. So I will be watching tomorrow morning and I think any kind of minor move in the bullish direction would be uh, not minor at all, but pretty significant. And yeah, all right. I think I've said that about five or six times over and over again just trying to talk myself out of that because I took a bullish position on the DIA today. I bought some calls and any kind of gap up tomorrow over 262 would be very, very bullish in my opinion. Probably not too late to get in if you want to join me, but I bought uh, three calls at the 262.50 strike that expire tomorrow. Uh, I have a $200 R, so they were 60 cents, so I was able to get three. Clive is saying on the chat pane that report for tomorrow is the import and export prices at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time and then consumer sentiment at 10. So um, 8.30 will be before the market opens, and then that consumer sentiment will be shortly after the market opens. So that may give it some um, room to move or some fuel to move one way or the other. I said, generally not huge market movers. Yep, that, yeah, not like the oil reports or the FOMC minutes, but hey, it's something, right? Um, yeah, so I, of course, would like to see the market go bullish. Let's check out the uh, Bollinger Bands. Obviously, we have pulled away from that top band. Uh, we're coming into the midline. So the DIA might get uh, the fuel it needs with the support from this midline to go back for the band. The SPY might go a little bit bearish and the DIA might go a little bit bullish. So this picture is a little bit more comforting to me, but remember that uh, SPY picture looked a lot like that right there or maybe kind of like that, but um, groovy. Let's turn on the uh, stochastics and the RSI. Yeah, nice and healthy higher highs on both of those. Looks very good, no divergence. All right, I'm feeling better. <laughs> the way the SPY looked on that Bollinger Band. 
did not make me happy. Now, could we, of course, end up making some flavor of a head and shoulders and go down? Well, not that far. You know, this is certainly possible. Maybe back down into the 50. It looks like that 50 has been acting as support. We could, but I think overall I'm just pretty neutral. It probably won't be up until in this area where I would start to worry about the DIA rolling over. And of course, that is where the SPY is right now. SPY has been leading the DIA just by a little bit. Um, tomorrow, I have, uh, let's see, currently my target on those DIA calls is $1.80. Uh, I will be updating those, uh, yeah, tomorrow, because I definitely do not want to lose on this trade. I do have three calls, so I might sell one or two of them a little bit early and hold on to the third to see what we get. I just have to make that decision tomorrow. Um, it does look like the uh, market is moving up in the post market at least a little bit. Not sure it's hard to see. That's a big pink line. Oh, that's actually a pretty healthy move up. So the post market, if you can't see it, is right there right now on the DIA. So coming back into this uh, resistance level, and yeah, if we break it, I think we go bullish like gangbusters tomorrow. The post market on the SPY, the one I'm really concerned about, putting in a continuation pattern might go either direction. Will be interesting to watch for sure. Let's take a look at the cues. Now the cues are already into that zone, kind of like the SPY is, of where we have had really strong resistance in the past. Uh, we are pretty far away from that 10 moving average and the Q's has been finding support at the 50 once and the 20 several times. So um, a pullback would not be too, too shocking. Let's check that Bollinger Band. And we are pulling away from the Bollinger Band. So the Q's did something rather unique right in there where it was away from the band for a longer than normal period of time. Maybe that is indicative of the NASDAQ, that it can run bullish without the Bollinger Band. Don't usually see that very often. But of course, these that I'm circling here have been after a pullback. We have not yet gotten that pullback. So, again, there's the pullback in the move. I guess there's the pullback in the, eh, I don't know. I'm not nearly as worried about this Bollinger Band picture as I was the SPY. Uh, Stokes and RSI. Yeah, that's not concerning to me. Hmm. That is divergence. Again, divergence doesn't mean that it's going to go screaming bearish. It does mean it's not a good time to go bullish. So we'll just, yeah. The cues, I guess I'm maybe a little bit more neutral on than that SPY. Man, that SPY picture is a little bit, little bit freaky, scary to me. All right, IWM. <clears throat> we gapped up a very tiny bit above this resistance, I believe. 157.50 was the high. We opened at 157.52 and traded up to 157.68. So on the IWM, we did break above that resistance, but did not continue. Uh, I'm looking for that massive sell-off. Yeah, there was that massive sell-off, which wasn't sustainable on the IWM. So maybe the IWM can continue bullish tomorrow and we get some gap and goes. So day traders, watch for some bullish gap and goes tomorrow setting up. That would be...
pretty neat. Might as well do our Bollinger Band exercise once again. That right there might end up looking a lot like that right there. So that space away from the Bollinger Band is very concerning. Um, again, a bullish gap tomorrow might will definitely shove us right back, back up into that upper band, and I think we continue. But um, yeah, when you start seeing times where we don't quite get into that upper band, uh, that is usually not a bullish sign. Questions on the overall market, go ahead and type them in. Interesting how we're making higher highs there. I guess even though we're kind of, well, I guess we kind of are. Notice the lower lows there, lower lows there and the higher lows there. That is bullish divergence. And you can either draw that in the bullish direction or in the sideways direction. But again, bullish divergence just means not the best time to go bearish. All right, checking the chat pane. All right, very cool. And just one look at the VIX just for fun. Volatility is low. People have more calls than they do puts. So that would be a little bit of a bullish sign. We'll see what happens tomorrow. All right, question, thoughts, opposing and views, type them in. IQ um, did not trigger. Uh, I sent out the weekly options newsletter yesterday. Or I didn't send it. I typed it, typed it wrong <laughs> and sent it to Angie and she sent it out. And then um, Albert posted it on the website for us, but everyone posted my bad typing. So I apologize. Um, it would not have affected anything because it did not trigger. The entry price for the calls is still the same, $2.20. The protective stop uh, was $1.20. And it set a lower low and was looking like it was going to go back up there and challenge up there. So I just moved the stop down a skirmidgen. Um, again, we had some big bearish candles in there that might be a bearish sign as this thing reversed. Uh, I think Jeremy did his um, weekly options newsletter post with the original setup uh, on that day. And of course, it looked like a very healthy pullback, a flag pattern. Um, and ready to continue upwards. And now we know, of course, it did not. There is a chance that this is just a retest of this double top. And we could continue on bearish down into the daily 100 simple moving average. So if you want to trade this thing bearish, continue, uh, consider that, especially if uh, the Bollinger SPY picture um, is an accurate prediction and we do take a little bit of a few days to a week, week and a half of a bearish move. Um, yeah, some money might be made with puts on IQ down into the 100 simple moving average. But as for now, um, yeah, stop loss is at one. The uh, entry is at 220 for the uh, May 25 calls. And for some reason, I'm thinking those are May 24 calls. Um, Oh, sorry, no, it's uh, calls expiring May 17, but the 25 strike. So maybe I can help with that May 17. Expiring May of 17, there we go. All right, party on. So that trade is open and wait, is it open? Swing trades, current month. It is not. I did that one yesterday. So it's April 10th, IQ 2.20, 1.20, 2.20, 2.20. Options, we are bullish. Uh, I give that one a good 
let's see, we are trading this one based off this gap and go move right there. So gap and go, it is open. And yeah, we're not in yet. So one, so number 132, Brad did it while Jeremy was gone. <laughs> So blame it on me if it doesn't work. And how about this? If it does work, can I get off of negative infinity for FTPs? For those of y'all that don't know the story, uh, I was losing FTPs for every bad joke. And eventually I pegged the uh, spreadsheet at the lowest number it could happen. All right, that's, I'm exaggerating. Groovy. IQ, there it is. Charles says, stop at one. Yes, thank you. Let's check out uh, Redfin Corporation. I think this one is a cancel now. Hmm. No, I'm going to leave it open. That's a big, solid move. Bearish volume is... Ridiculous. If this thing goes bullish tomorrow, though, and takes out the high of this candle, if we go higher than 2282, I will cancel this one tomorrow. Um, these last two bullish candles were a pretty reasonable signal that uh, it did not retest enough. But man, we have so many uh, strong supports in our favor. Uh, I'm not going to cancel that one just yet. Any W, eh, I'll leave that one open till tomorrow. I would be shocked if that one fills. But we are just now getting the 100 simple moving average in our favor. So lots and lots of really cool and awesome support helping us out. All right, uh, ticker I, again, we've got puts that expire next Thursday. Um, if you do not want to get put the shares, the fact that we closed out of the money today and looks like it's gapping down, if you want to close, if you want to close this thing out, um, I get it. If you want to buy to close that naked put and you can do so pretty cheap, uh, I certainly understand tomorrow is Friday and that means Saturday and Sunday will be another week of theta decay. So if you want to risk it and hold on to it through the end of Friday, those options should deteriorate significantly over the weekend uh, when an option is out of the money and within a couple of days of expiration, the premium, the value of that option goes down very very uh, quickly. So keep your eye on that. If you do want to get out, if you do not want to be put to shares, uh, you should have an opportunity. Um, yeah, you should have an opportunity. Well, you had an opportunity today uh, and tomorrow, definitely. Of course, this bear call spread is completely gorgeous and yeah, unlikely to, uh, unlikely to be an issue. SQ, naked put here, expiring next Thursday. Looks solid. All kinds of strong support in our favor. Facebook is the one that is uh, really giving us a challenge. The Unravel is pretty much doing the most challenging thing that it can do, which is go up there um, and hit that, uh, hit the short call but not go through to the long call um, Blake and I had the exact same view on this today it looks much more bullish than bearish the main challenge is is that we have less than a week until these things expire right these things ex uh, expire next Thursday um, and the long call that we still have is out of the money and just like Intellisat ticker I if the option is out of the money and theta is running out, 
the premium of that runs out very, very quickly. Now, the worst thing that can happen to us is that we take more than the max loss, right? The max loss was $2.50, not including the premium that we got for this. So I have put a stop on the long call at $1. Uh, if this thing moves down tomorrow, that's going to trigger very early. If this thing moves up tomorrow, then there's a great chance that we uh, get out for a very small loss, maybe even a gain on this. But I, I think, sorry, I don't think, I will be closing out the official trade tomorrow and I will not be taking a uh, Saturday and Sunday of Theta Decay. So if you are in this one, um, watch, uh, watch Slack carefully and I will be posting it. Uh, I have been asked several times, I am not in this trade, right? This trade was set up as an iron condor that I did not take. Uh, I was just doing the trading floor on that day, or was it that day? <laughs> Over here sometime. Uh, Jeremy was on vacation, and I do not know what his plan was on this one. But, um, yeah, so I made the call. And if this thing just can go bullish just a little bit, um, it's going to work out very, very nicely. If we had more time, if we had two weeks or three weeks on that, definitely would be holding because I can hold through one of these if I have two or three weeks. But if I have four days, then that could just destroy and wreck everything. Questions about that, let me know. C-R-O-N, a bear call spread. Very nice. The lower this thing goes, yeah, that's just beautiful. You can close it out if you want. Uh, if it were me, I would leave it open. Tesla uh, was considering this for a day trade today. It had a very bearish gap, but it's in a buying zone. Uh, you guys have a naked put way down there. So actually, let me put that back on and see what would have happened with my day trade setup. And probably would have trailed out for break even. When this bullish candle came in, I would have lowered the stop to right there. And yeah, either break even or a very, very small win. But yeah, tough to trade something bearish when it's in a buying zone, even if it gapped down. Tesla's not one that I really like to day trade a lot. Um, so I guess I've been saying it's in a buying zone. So let me talk a little bit about that since we are uh, a swing trading floor. Let's see. I don't need this text box either. Oops. So Tesla has been in a channel since middle of 2017, you can draw a sell line right about here. And let's see, where are my colors? Let's make that a sell line. And I guess we put the blue line up there. The other blue line I would put right about there. And then the buy line is going to be right about there. So pretty much what this means, this is a channel trading strategy. And as the stock crosses the green line, you buy with a protective stop below the blue line. Absolute zero value options are gorgeous um, with the channel strategy, but you gotta have enough time. As you, as you approach the red line, you exit. Uh, some people like to exit half because if it continues, you can have half your shares, but you exit some or all. As it comes back down, not only do you um, exit the rest if you still have them, but you enter short. And in this case, you would either hold or you'd exit for break even. But uh, as it approaches the green line, 
you buy to cover either some, right? Because it could continue on down. Um, as it leaves the green line, you buy with a protective stop down here. You sell to close, you sell to enter, you buy to close, you buy to enter, you sell to close, you sell to enter, you buy to close, right? You guys get it. So you would be buying to enter somewhere around in here. And that's why I'm not a big fan of shorting the day trade. Um, because yeah, I think the sentiment is more bullish than bearish when Tesla is down in that range. That's not, uh, I'm not gonna make any official trades like that, but if you want to investigate uh, channels and how to trade channels, that's how you do it. Um, so any official swing trade on Tesla? Not at this point. If it wants to pull back into this minor resistance, sorry, pull up into that resistance, and then give me one more wiggle, I could consider a maybe a buy stop limit there with a protective stop down here. Uh, target one, target two, target three. And that's just an okay reward risk. And there's uh, a lot of bearish news about Tesla. Tesla stock down as battery expansion plans with Panasonic put on hold. Yeah, t Tesla's, I mean, it's a car company, but it's pretty much like a tech company. And anytime uh, a little bit of good news comes out, this thing goes flying upwards. And anytime a little bit of bad news comes out, it gets crumpled. But I believe that is the end of our open trades. Any questions on those folks? Feel free to type those in. Oh, ATVI is an open trade. How come I did not have that one? It's an active trade. Oh, you guys got filled on it. Hmm. Why did I not have that one on my radar? Well, there it is. All right. So filled on ATVI. Looks pretty solid. Let's see if we can get a reversal tomorrow and continue up through this resistance. Um, I would say the target should be about 2R. So if one risk unit is a dollar, a reward would be $2, so about 330. And if we have the 48 call, $3.30 would be about 51. Yeah. Let's do that. Target. Two R is three dollars and thirty cents. Party on. Target for ATVI swing trade is three dollars and thirty cents to R. There we go. I tell you what, something's is telling me, Brad, it's a good time to save. And by something, I mean it's the voices that I hear in my head. Jeremy doesn't want me to talk about that on the mic, but at least we're not recording right now, right? <laughs> Although I did have to go up and check <laughs> my recording. Blake and I were sharing stories about when we do a, a video or one of these and forget to record. One of my earlier times uh, of doing these webinars, I forgot to hit record, did the entire hour, forgot to record. Uh, and instead of pulling everyone back in, uh, obviously I had the list of tickers there. I just um, redid it, I redid the video, did the whole entire hour, then realized that I did the entire hour of recording with my mute on. So <laughs> I had to redo it a third time.
my wife was like, I thought that show was an hour. And I was like, let me tell you what happened. So anyways, uh, Mickey D's up here into a really strong resistance. You know, uh, was it Tuesday? I think it was. I was considering a bullish move on that, and I think I still am. Yeah, I'm more bullish than bearish. I was looking at this. What well, It might become a double top. But we've got a pretty strong bullish trend line there. There's just not much room to trade that back down to the daily 100 simple moving average. So, um, yeah, I'm going to be waiting on McDonald's. Looks like earnings are coming up early in May. Uh, let's see, today is the 11th. That is May 3rd. So, yeah, this says 20 days. So we're less than three weeks a day. I'm not going to enter into a day trade or into a swing trade three weeks away from earning. I wonder if they have spiked the volatility and I apologize if I looked at this on, if I looked at this uh, on Monday or Tuesday, whenever I did the show last and did not share it. Yes, they have spiked volatility. So buying options over earnings are going to be expensive. Whenever you see the yellow line move up, um, that is uh, implied volatility, and that is a big chunk of the uh, of the price of the options. Have a good one, Clive. All right. Uh, for those of you that do not have this website but want it, I'll tell you what, I'll share it here in the chat pane. And I will also post it in Slack. So uh, I'm not going to hit the swing trade or channel tab, but uh, for those of you watching at home um, that want this link, come check it out in Slack. I'll read you the time once I do it. Here is a CBOE link that I use to check implied volatility of an option that I am considering buying or selling and obviously if the um, if the uh, if the implied volatility is high I want to be selling that option if the implied volatility is low I want to buy it so 5 37 p.m. Eastern time um, yeah if you're watching this video uh, come in through slack and it'll be it'll be there yeah if I'm gonna buy an option I want this yellow line in the lower part of the screen and I want it below the blue line. If I'm selling an option, I want it in the higher part and I want the yellow line higher than the blue line. Groovy. So McDonald's is a big old wait for me. Red Hat, we were looking to see if this thing was going to roll over. It did not. So I'm going to take this off the watch list. I won't be trading that. Macy's was also on our watch list for potentially a bullish breakout. That's a lot of bearish candles in a row. Yesterday was on big volume. Uh, I have no reason why it would, but man, if that thing would to gap up to there tomorrow, I would be interested in day trading it bullish. But um, yeah, as far as the swing trade, at least not this time. Tell you what, WBA was requested, so let me look at that next, and then I'll go through some of these transportation stocks. Walgreens Boots Alliance, just getting the boot, getting booted. Very, very extended in the bearish direction, so if you are in bearish, congratulations. I am jealous. I wish I had some puts. Uh, I think a protective stop there or there makes a lot of sense if you have room. Um, if you do have puts, you might be taking profits because that is way far down. You ought to be way far up on your profitability. Just be sure that, you're, that you don't be one of those people that says, at one point I was up 2R or 4R or 6R, but now I'm just hoping to get out for break even. If you're up nice and profitable, profitably 
profitably. If you're if you're trading uh, profitably in a position, close close it out, close some out. Just be sure you get a nice profit. Um, now, if I am looking to enter on Walgreens, I'm definitely going to be waiting. Nothing on this chart looks bullish. It is into a support area, but man, I'm definitely going to need this thing to wait and go sideways for several weeks. Let some of those moving averages catch up before I continue on. So, uh, Pavan, thank you for the request. If you have any questions, hit me up in Slack. Um, let me know. But yeah, for WBA, um, if I am not in it, I do not want to get in it. I think it's too late. Uh, if I am in it in a bearish fashion, uh, yeah, be tighten up, tightening the stops and taking some profits. Um, and if for some reason you are a long-term bullish shareholder, uh, you know, I think there have been plenty of signs that uh, it's time to exit. Uh, you know, if you, I guess if you're longer term, you you know where your support is there, there, something like that. All right. Let's take a look at Southwest Airlines. A lot of folks like to uh, to trade them to some Southwest Airlines. Hmm. So I'm seeing a nice little bullish reversal here and a pretty nifty retest of that neckline with a room to go to that uh, neck strong resistance, probably take a partial there. That daily 200 simple moving average sure is nasty. But when moving averages are sideways, they tend to not be very strong. Man, what I think well, I don't think what I wish I had done is if I had seen it on that day, April 1st, that would have hit my watch list. And after some of this action happened, uh, I think a buy limit right, that's a little bit high. I think a buy limit right across there. No, right across there. And where would my protective stop had been? Oh, right there. So right at the bottom of that candle and below that support. And then that daily 200 simple moving average would have been uh, one R away. So could have peeled off some there to lock in a gain of some sort. So let me just go ahead and redraw this. What I wish I would have done. Bullish buy limit. Where's that one? There it is. Protective stop underneath that candle. So the low of that candle is 49.82. The low of this support over here is 49.93. So let's make it 49.74 for the stop. Pull off something there, probably like 20%. And then probably whatever is remaining, take some there and maybe trail the stop on the rest or go ahead and close that out for a massive win. Wow. Darn it. And uh, if I were in it right now, I would have my protective stop right underneath that. The low of that candle is 51.38, so 51.29. Man, wish I had done that one. All right, well, moving on. 
So, uh, okay, that's what I would be doing. So if you are in it, consider those targets um, and uh, consider protective stop either 5129, 4974, or uh, 4839 based on how long-term you are on Southwest Airlines. I like the shorter trades, but I think you all know that. Um, if I am not in it but want to be, ooh, yikes, earnings coming up. So if I am not in it but want to, I guess I got to wait for earnings. If I do have shares of this, not a bad time to be selling some covered calls up in this range and buying some protective puts down there. Now, if you, uh, if you do not have 100 shares, I would suggest not selling the covered call because if you get filled on a covered call and you don't own the shares, that hurts. But you can still buy a protective put. Uh, even though you don't own 100 shares, the protective put can still protect you. So consider that. All right, so I talked about if I'm not in, I have to wait. If I am in, those are my targets. Selling covered calls, protection over earnings. Yep, all right, done. Delta Airlines, very, very extended in the bullish direction. Hmm, that whole Tesla channel trading strategy is coming to mind as it definitely looks like this is some flavor of resistance. I don't know if I want to short it right there. or buy puts and trade it back down. Looks like earnings just happened. But tell you what, uh, let's check in on this one tomorrow. Because if this thing wants to wiggle back down and make some flavor of a head and shoulders, I will be buying some puts. Like maybe the uh, weekly options newsletter next week. Uh, that may be too soon. So Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, maybe the weekly options newsletter uh, after, uh, yeah, a week from next Tuesday. Um, because a target area, I mean, is down in here. Hmm, I'm liking that. Groovy. Maybe I should draw those lines as my reminder. 56, 69, bearish. I'll just call it a stop limit for now. Protective stop up there. <clears throat> I do not want to go bullish on it just yet because um, it is very, very extended in the bullish direction. Needs to rest, needs to sell off. 5906. Oh, yeah. I like it. Not yet, folks. This is not an official trade. I want to wait for this thing to come down and form a right shoulder. Then. If I have my say about it, <laughs> it'll be an official trade. By then, this 10 moving average will have come up and we will learn if it's going to support this stock and we go sideways and then maybe we can consider taking it on or if it's going to completely blow that out of the water and we come on back into the buying zone of the channel. If I am long on shares on Delta Airlines, uh, I think I'd have a partial stop. I'd use, a, you know, like a buy stop market. Sorry, a sell stop market. If I'm long on shares, I'd use a sell stop market for part of my shares there. And you know what? Maybe the rest there. As much as this thing has wiggled, uh, a stop down in here is no longer advantageous. Um, yeah, I think I'd have a partial stop there and a partial stop there. So I've had some questions. I've done some partial stops lately in day trading. People say, Brad, what, what's a partial stop? Well, instead of having a buy stop 
for all of your share, or, uh, I'm thinking bearish because I've got bearish drawn here. If you are in bullish, if you are in bullish, your protective stop would be a sell stop market. So just kind of like we have partial targets, you have partial stops. So if you are in bullish, a partial stop would be a sell stop market for just not your full position size. Definitely make sure that if you do partial stops, that by the time you want out, it is all of your shares and not extra. And you don't, you don't hang on to some, but. Okay, so I talked about what I would do if I had shares of Delta bullish. I talked about what I would do if I do not want to be in. Oh, you know what? If you are in bullish because this thing is so extended, um, I kind of like the idea of selling some covered calls up here in the 64, 68 range. And yeah, buying some puts there or there. Groovy. All right. Love. Oh, yeah. Just going to be watching that one. All right. American Airlines looks a little bit more like Southwest. Not, not nearly as much of a convincing buy shape down here due to all of these lower highs. Earnings coming up in just a little bit. So uh, if you are looking to get in on American because of earnings coming up here, uh, I would be waiting. If you are long on shares, I think a nice tight stop uh, and some aggressive targets here. Aggressive targets because earnings coming up. Get out while you can. Uh, and if you can get out uh, anywhere up in this range, you should be nicely profitable. Uh, if you are holding shares and you're a longer term person, um, consider some covered calls up here in the 38 to 41 range and a protective put just below that uh, wick of uh, Tuesday's candle. That's what I'd be doing. Questions, thoughts, opposing views, type them in. Ticker of FedEx. All right, so FedEx is rested from its Kershmolishment. Nice little sideways action here. I don't like that lower low, but I'd like that higher low. Hmm. I'm wondering if there's something dirty we can do if this thing comes back and retests this old resistance as new support. The problem is my protective stop is going to want to be down on this area and that 200 simple moving average is not going to be a very good target or sorry that 200 is going to be the target where I'd want out. So if I were to do a trade I would be doing something like a buy limit. Uh, that protective stop again I have a I'll look to see if I can get it any higher than that. But the target's going to be, you know, underneath this daily 200 simple moving average. That's a horrible reward risk ratio. Where would I need? I'd need it to be somewhere like up in here. Um, it's not bad, right? I mean, I've got a nice bullish retest gap there, another bullish retest gap there. That should hold. I've got a lot of exponential moving averages. I've got one simple moving average. It's a good trade. Let's see, one more look. I don't think that's good enough to make an official trade though. Let's see if the Bollingers have anything to help us with, like a lower band up. Nope. It's going to say if the lower Bollinger band were somewhere around in here, then that would 
give me encouragement. It did fail to get into that upper band, but I was talking about and expecting a pullback, so that's not too surprising. Um, Stokes and RSI. Look good, but man, that looks really high for where the stock is. Folks, I'm going to wait. Uh, one of the voices that I mentioned earlier is now saying, hey, Brad, watch out for a bull trap. So this thing's been selling off, selling off, selling off. What's the chance that this thing triggers in some bulls and then either continues on down or at least comes back into this support area? Um, I'll watch it, but I will be waiting. Let's check out ticker OOPS UPS. Now this one, I would love a bullish stop limit there, protective stop there, but I don't like that resistance there. Um, way too big to call this an inverted head and shoulders. But I could always switch it over to the weekly chart or the monthly chart. Oops. Uh, I guess we don't do monthly chart. Show me the monthly chart, not the ticker. The monthly chart on Amer uh, on UPS, please. No, not the inverted head and shoulders I thought it would be. Yeah, there it is on the weekly chart. Love how it gapped. Oh, we have earnings coming up in just a little bit. What, what? All right, earnings coming up on April 25th. So I will not be making that trade official. But um, what that trade would have been, it'd be about 115.28. bullish stop limit. I don't know. I could go over a little bit more details about the entry, but I've got more tickers and I'm running short on time. A protective stop somewhere about in there. And then my final target up over yonder. A little bit higher for my final target and a partial yeah, right there in the middle. That's the way it would have looked. And had earnings not been coming up here in just a few weeks, I would make that official. Um, too much time to call it, but man, if that thing can go sideways until earnings and gap above there, or gap even just a little bit below, I would be happy to crush it in either direction. All right, General Motors, generally speaking, is pretty extended. Looks like uh, the bear trap did not work. Moving on up, earnings coming up in just uh, a couple of weeks, so I would not be looking to get in. If I am in, on General Motors, looks like I'm in a really strong target area. So um, between it being into resistance and earnings coming up, a great time to take your profits, uh, tighten your stops, selling some covered calls, might get some premium up here in the 42, 44 area. Uh, and yeah, either a stop or a, a put right there below uh, right there in that gap looks really nice that's how I would be doing uh, that one Ford Motor Company wow again earnings coming up love that break of that resistance fortunately coming into another resistance so um, if I were trading Ford 
I think I would be taking some profits anywhere in this area, but a nice tight stop right in there. Uh, if I hold shares, of course, covered calls a little bit higher, like up in the 10 area, put down here, uh, yeah, the nine strike put over earnings. Um, if I'm not in, I'm definitely waiting till after earnings, but uh, Ford looks pretty tough as it's uh, climbing back up into this resistance here. Let's see what it can do. The last one on my list is CSX. Man, this thing is just moving like a, man, can't think of a good, good pun. <laughs> um, love that uh, high break, is that an all-time high? Possibly an all-time high break there on CSX. So yeah, let's let it wiggle. Maybe we can come up into here. Oh, earnings coming up very soon on this one. So please, 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 Mr. Market Maker, on April 17th or 16th, whenever earnings is, let's see. Between now and then, come up here and then put in a really strong bearish candle. Give me one of these bearish volumes right over here and then gap up. Please. Or just continue your sideways action and gap down to there and I'll trade you bearish. Um, all right, so CSX, if I'm not in, I'm waiting for earnings. If I am in, earnings coming up quick and we are in a strong resistance area. So great time to close out, take some profits. Uh, great time to be selling some covered calls, maybe in the 82 to 85 area and a nice tight protective put somewhere around the 74, 74, uh, 74 75 area. Looks good. Uh, yeah, that's it. Questions, thoughts, opposed, and views, type them into the chat pane. Uh, I will be back tomorrow, so be sure and uh, send me your tickers you want to take a look at in Slack. And tomorrow is, what, Finance Friday? So we will crush it. Folks, thanks for trading with me today and this week. You guys rock. And as always, trade on logic, not on hope. Have a good one, everybody.